try to do, number one first, let me give Steve a lot and uh, Mike, Pier is it Peace? Pierce? Yeah, Pierce. Uh, Pierce. Credit, I looked at that video a couple of times about presentation. So hopefully I'm going to be a little better than I've been being. I won't rattle off so much. What we're going to deal with today is showing you how uh, to make templates for any shape box. You find a log or something that looks pretty spotted or whatever, you want to make a box out of it. Or you might want to make something else. You can glue up wood to make boxes. You want to do things that are odd shaped, but you don't know how, how you're going to route it or how you're going to do it. Uh, I love doing this type stuff, and it's not complicated. And hopefully when I get through, you realize it. But if I start getting complicated, raise your hand because I'm not complicated. I don't do anything that's complicated, okay? What we'll do is, I'm going to talk a little bit, about 15 minutes, showing you some stuff and talking. Then I'm going to show you a couple of things about routing, two different ways to make templates, how some mistakes will occur, and how to correct them. And most of the time when you see a video making anything, I have never seen them show you how to fix the mistakes. All right, so you get to the point you're lost because something will happen and you don't know how to get away from it, okay? So hopefully today, any questions you have, I might not be able to answer all of them, we'll try. But a lot of the questions I will cover, a lot of your questions will be answered during the demonstration. Uh, I do have some handouts. I only made probably 12, 13 copies. Uh, if you don't get a copy of it at the end of the day, you can call me or email me and I'll send you a copy or you can go they might make copies here, okay? All right, I'm not passing them out now because you'll be reading something while I'm doing something else and you'll miss probably part of what I'm doing. All right. We'll try to stay on, uh, on tape. The first thing that I do, number one, you get a box. Well, let's start with this one. It doesn't matter about <coughs> what kind of a template I make. I promise Buzz I'm not going to jump around too much. This is the template I made to route that big box. All right? And I, I'm sorry. I have to remember that, Buzz. All right. I'll show you how I make this template and any other template. This is the template I made. I do have to move over. Oh, stay right there, Buzz. Is this showing up on the camera? Okay. Yep. This is the template that I use to make this particular box. This is the template that I actually made to route this particular box. That's showing, okay. These are just some other templates I've made over the years to route some boxes. This one in particular is an interesting story. I used to do classes, and at the end of every class, this afternoon of the last day of doing the two-day class, I'd always glue up couple of two by fours and put them on the table and have the student draw any kind of box you want to draw and I'll show you how to route it. And this is one that they actually drew. And I made a template and routed it and I was able to show it to them at the woodworking show. Okay. Uh, and these are just some different templates I made to route different boxes. That's all I brought them for to show you the materials I use. When I started out, the uh, trying to route boxes, only way I knew how to make templates I had to get, because the guide bushings are usually so long, I had to use wood that was thick enough to where the guide bushing wouldn't sit on the box and that the template itself was, it was riding on, okay? So I used to have to use this, but what it does is that once I pull the bit out, Once I had to ride a bit to where the part that stuck out of the guide bushing was very little and I couldn't 
route deep in the boxes. And I used to have to take my chisel and do all the other work. And that was a lot of work. So I wind up then, if you notice this guide bush, and I grind it down, I sand it down on the belt sander until I had about eighth of an inch or a bit sixteenth or whatever it is. All right. That's enough. Now I could use a thinner uh, template and I could get a little more depth in my, in my router. If that makes any sense. And this is pretty strong enough to do what I need to do. So the, uh, it made life a lot easier for me. Let me move this out of the way. Now I can route anything I want to route. I can route a box half this big and I stick it actually to the table. All right, so if it has an odd shape, if the sides are not parallel, I can't clamp it in there. But as long as the bottom is flat, I can stick it to the table and route anything I want to route safely. That's the main thing. So these are the things I want to show you is how I do some of these things uh, to make you, so that you'll be more creative. You get credit for being a better woodworker than you have to be like I get all the time. All right. So, uh, but you have no fun. Now, that was another thing I used to have to do. Anything I, I call everything a template that I use. It can be a pattern. Somebody says, well, no, that's a pattern. I don't care. I write template on it. So in Ted Ball and Woodworking, in my shop, it's a template. All right. So I'm not technical about the terminology. All right. I had years ago, if you've ever been in a print shop, you see these little flyer things on the table or whatever to say around to it. I had the idea, my wife had the idea, that these would be some great things to make for Father's Day. I was doing festivals then. So I had these printed up, and this is actually on a clear stick on cellophane that will stick actually stick on here. But now I needed to route something that you know, I could do it with. This is a base off of one of my routers that I use. And I had this made to fit, <laughs> fit this base. So I'd stick it down with two-sided tape, you know, a square piece, and I'd just route it. But it was so rough on the ends, I had to figure out how to do that. But this is another way that I used to route it. And the bit that, you know, I used a bit similar to this that, you know, had the guide wheel so that it follows this around. And I can use this on the outside, just a straight bit. But when I route the inside, I use a spiral bit, upcut spiral bit. What does that, what does that Father's Day thing say? Can you pass that around? This? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. This is, uh, if you ever go to any shop where they print, they either have these things on the table somewhere. Sure. It's just, it says around to it. And it's mainly, to me, it's geared as a novelty thing for a wife to give to a husband. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so once you read it, and uh, I do have probably a couple of hundred of those things. <laughs> Somebody want to buy some. Uh, the, I won't spend a lot of time talking about the guide bushing. These are the Porter Cable guide bushings. There are a lot of other companies, I think, that make guide bushings. And if you look at the smaller ones, you don't have to do anything to because the bits is made for you know, use a smaller bit. So you don't have as much sticking out. All right, but on the larger ones, on the larger ones, this is the way they look. That's the way that one looked. It's on that router before I ground it down so that I can get extra depth. All right, let's put this out of the way. Where is yeah. that? that bar. Oh. I keep forgetting I'm trying to look at the camera and not at you. All right. So these are just some of the bits I use now. I will mention this as I'm routing. Whenever you're routing inside of anything, you go clockwise. That keeps, the bit keeps it pulled up against the edge. If you try to go counterclockwise, it, it wants to ride out. If you're routing on the outside of anything, you go counterclockwise. That way, the bit, if I was routing this flush, uh, I had a piece on here stuck on here. I'm running around. Uh, I don't want to be flush. I am going counterclockwise. It's going to keep everything tight. Outside, you go counterclockwise. Inside, you go clockwise. Okay. Now, 
Uh, what we're going to deal with today, I'll show you some problems with this and I'll show you how we correct them, how we're going to correct them. And I'm going to do some routing of this depth a little bit deeper than what I got here. This one is one that show you how you can take any kind of shape. I can shape the outside of this any way I want to shape it. And I can make up a template, which we did, to make the inside any kind of way I want to do it. So when people open up a square box, you're looking for the inside to be square. When it has a different shape, people say, wow. All of a sudden now, it's, it's more intriguing. Only because it's different from what you see every day. And that's all we're doing. It, it allows you to, this is miter, and uh, in order to route the inside, you just miter thicker pieces of wood. Now, if... Uh, if you're going to, if you only have pieces that are this wide and you still need, you want to route the inside, <coughs> glue two pieces together, three pieces together, it doesn't matter. This angle doesn't change regardless to how wide the wood is. So that I can still glue this same square corners up or octagon or hexagon shape, anything else. Now, if you don't want the top to show where you're gluing the wood together, you can do two things. If you do want it to show and you want to make it more decorative, you could always put a little thin veneer strip of a contrasting wood between each each piece you glued up. All right, Does that make any sense? Everybody just follow where I'm going. If not, you can do. You stay where you are, brother. I'm coming. If not, once you glued the pieces together and you did what it routed the shape you wanted. Get you a piece of veneer and glue it over the whole piece. Then route the shape. It will conform to the whole shape of what you're doing. So on the top and the bottom of a regular box, you would only see solid wood. All right, that's a different way to do it. So now first, if I want to make up a template out of solid wood and I want it to have this shape, I want it to fit flush. I want to know what the shape of this box is first. On the outside, then I can draw up whatever kind of design I want the inside to be routed to. All right, and the way you do that, let me draw it and then I'll show it to you. Is you take your piece that you're going to make your template out of, it has to be wide enough. You put the box on there that the shape you want, the shape that's on the outside. I'm marking this in a hurry so. Now, that's my overall shape of the box. Now, if I want the side walls to be, if I wanted this wall to be 3 eighths of an inch or half an inch, it doesn't matter. Like I said, I forgot my measuring tape rod, but these are my famous sticks. Now, well, for demonstration purposes, say if I wanted this wall, this wall to be 5 eighths of an inch, I won't mark 5 eighths of an inch. The reason is, I'm holding it so you can see it okay. All right. The reason is, this guide bushing is going to ride up against your template. From the outside edge of this guide bushing to the outside edge of your bit is about an eighth of an inch. So I got to allow for that eighth of an inch when I make up my template if I want the wall side to be a certain thickness. All right. So what I would do is, if this is going to be five eighths of an inch, let me put a mark here so you'll understand where we're going. See, this is five eighths, but I will make my template up where the template is only that wide. You got me now? So that when I route it, I'll wind up with, with the bit actually being here. I'll wind up with the thickness of the walls that I want. Now when you route irregular shapes, the beauty about doing irregular shape boxes is that everything doesn't have to be exactly the same thickness. I could have one wall 
one thickness and have another wall of different thickness because I got these different shapes. So that allows me not to be as precise and you don't have to worry about it. All right. If you look at this, this is thick here, it doesn't matter if this is what I'm routing because I'm doing a completely different shape. So I can get away with it and it makes life a lot easier. So now, the odder the shape, the more you look like you're, what I always say, an artiste, but you're nothing, all right? That's all it is. I'm doing something that everybody can't do. I don't know how to do, so I want to show you how I do these things. I'm going to do it my top. I'll find it. Okay. Now, <coughs> two things you do, two ways to make a template. As I say, I can do it like this. Oh, I stuck these pieces on here. Now, if you notice, <coughs> I stuck these on with them overhanging with gaps in them so that you can actually see that you don't have to try to fit every one of these angles like you're doing a box. These are not, the angles don't matter. The only thing that matters is this corner right here because the guide bushing, what'd you do with the box, Buzz? I need that for one second, sorry. If I'm routing this, this guide bushing is not going to make a square corner. It's going to round that corner. So that what was square, if you notice on all of these corners inside, I'll show you better on this corner. If you notice these corners are not square, the guide bushing is going to, when it comes around, it's going to round that corner. So it doesn't, I don't have to have, the, the wood doesn't have to fit exact tight as long as it's touching right here at the corner. Okay? Any questions on any of that so far? All right. I said I wasn't going to jump around, but I'm jumping around a little bit. And this is stuck on with two-sided tape. And it doesn't take a lot of tape sometimes to hold the stuff. If I'm doing um, template out of solid wood, I normally take my two-sided tape, and you won't believe it, but can you see this? Mm -hmm. right. I normally take my two-sided tape. Now I'm cutting toward my hand, which is unsafe, but I'm at an angle here. I'm going to hit my hand before I do anything else and I always hold the tape on the end. I'm not pulling real hard. So I only use pieces like this if I'm sticking this down. So that way, and I could actually put a piece here, a piece here, a piece here, and a piece here. That will hold this template. All right. So that allows me to put the template where it goes now. There's a mistake in this, and I'll show you why. There's a one right here. And there's a one right here, which means this template was made to fit this box this way. This box might not be exact. The, the template I designed that I put here might not be exact with this and this being exactly the same size. So if I turn this template the other way, I will get a completely different thing. And that's what I'm going to show you. I started routing this box. Can you see this, bud? As I got here, there's a tear out. You'll get that sometime because the grain of the wood, as you're going with your rod a bit, the grain of the wood changes sometimes. The bit hits it the wrong way. The same as if you were trying to route something on the edge. With the grain running this way, you try to route on the edge and you get something that tears out. Well, when this tore out, I need this to be solid here. It tore out here in the corner and tore out here. So what I did, since I was going all the way through with this box to show you how to do it, I turned the box over. When I turned it over, I didn't put my template. Here's the one on the template, here's the one here. This is the way the template goes. So the template should have been put on it this way when I routed it. Then the sides would be straight up and down. By turning the template around, it meant that I had, a, it was a little difference right there. Can you see that? Uh, where it didn't route straight up and down. That is correctable. As long as this is, the top profile is fine like I want it. 
once I put the bottom on this, I would just take some wood fill and put it here and sand it down and smooth it. Nobody will ever know it. Same thing with the, <coughs> the tear outs that I have here. I can fill that in with wood filler. Once I route this down, if it's still some showing, I can fill that in with wood filler. It's going to be inside, and I'm going to flock it. So once I put, fill it up, I mean, once I sand it down and make it smooth, and I flock it, nobody will ever know with me, so you think I did a perfect job on it. I mean, that makes any kind of sense? All right. Now, what I would do with this, I didn't, I was going to go ahead and route the bottom in, and what I'm going to do with this bottom, all right, I'll make another template to actually route this out, even though the corners were round, once I route it out to fit this piece of wood, that's what I'm doing. I cut the bottom first, now I'm going to route it to fit this particular piece of wood. I will glue it in where it's flush, or I can glue it in to where it's recessed about an eighth of an inch. Okay? And uh, once I route it where it's round here, I just take my chisel and square the corners up. So it will fit the corner, fit like that. that all right? So that's why I didn't finish this box. But I just wanted to show you the process of uh, how you do it. And the only way I did this is the same way I did. Would it matter if you left the corners curved? No, the only thing that matter is I curved the corners, I got to curve these to fit. It's easier. Well, it's easier to draw inside. this, it's easier to draw this square. <coughs> and cut it square and make this, make the route, the part I'm routing fit this and to make this fit the curvature. You understand what I'm coming from? That's going to be your top. Yeah, this is the bottom. Yeah, this is, this is going to be recessed in here. This is the top. You, you understand where I'm going now? What I'm trying to show you is if you want to, if you want to glue up a box like you do regular box, I don't care if it's hexagon shape or whatever, where you got the mitre corners, but you want to route it all the way, you want to put a different shape inside. All right. If you try to do it with the bottom on it, like you normally do a box, you're going to have a problem when you get down to where the router bit is close to the bottom. You either have to go back in there with a the chisel to try to do something, you won't get a clean looking edge. But if I do it this way, now if I put the bottom in it, say if I glue the bottom in, and I don't like the way it looks. Maybe I got a little crack here, a little crack there. Tell you another little secret that I have done. I have actually flopped the whole thing and stick my little tabs on there. When people pick up the box and they see it flopped on the bottom, they say, wow. Okay? <laughs> and these are things I'm trying to show you that you do to not make things complicated and you can work with doing a lot of things, okay, with less trouble. Yeah. And I'm probably missing something here. Yeah, go ahead. If, you, if you're going to recess the bottom into the wood, do you have another uh, template that fits around the finished box? No, I'm going to. Gonna, I'm going to make a template. I'll use this. All right. I'll do two things. That's the outside of my box. You see that? Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a template. <clears throat> now, this is where I would measure to make sure I got the same distance on both sides with the template. Let me hold it you can see it. I'm sorry. I would measure to make sure I got the same distance from here to here as I got from here to here. Same thing from the bottom to here here to here so that now this is centered you understand where we're going with that now what i would do then this is what i'm going to take out all right i'm going to route that but what i want to make sure i do because i can i can look at this box and say it's square but if you were an engineer and you measure it, it might not be exactly square. But if it looked like it's square and it's close enough, not off that much, don't worry about it. All right? But what I would do is, I'll always put me a little mark so I'll know that once I make the template, it fits this 
This goes in there one way. In other words, I'm making something to fit this. This is already made. So I'm going to make it fit this. And it's in the bottom of that box. So when I get through, this is what I've taken out. And I only do the depth of the plywood. Or the bottom, whatever I'm using for the bottom. So it can fit flush. Or well, if I want to fit recessed to where it looks like it's a bottom already, you know, like a regular box, I can actually uh, route it a uh, quarter of an inch deep so that this is recessed in then eighth of an inch because this is a quarter of an inch. That, I mean a quarter of an inch. In, in the case of this box, would it mm -hmm. be just as easy or maybe easier to use the type of template that you put on the other one? Just cut a bunch of strips and tape them on? This one? Yeah. Yeah, you can do it either way. What I'm showing you is the same template I made here I can make with strips. Yeah. Yeah, but the only problem you have when you make it with strips is when you have something that's curved right. and uh, oh here it is this actually I used on some box so whatever it was it had a curve and all this did was fit you understand what I'm saying whether it came off this angle or that angle or this angle it doesn't matter I made this to fit what I want to write inside so you can do the same thing with this I mean, as far as right in the bottom. But if I was going to put a bottom in this, and these sides were a little thick, uh, like I say, I can, I can make a bottom like that, or I can make a square bottom and recess it in. And if I did that, now it looked like I'm more of an artist because if I recess that bottom in, people look at it and say, well, how did you do that? This is a different shape from the outside of the box, and the bottom is a different shape from this. So it looks like I've done a lot more figuring and all this stuff, and all I've done is done some little measure. You understand? Is that making any sense? So you got the option of doing anything uh, different way. I'm just showing you some of the ways I do things. And so this is not the only way you can do any of it. You will come up with ideas that I have never thought about to make it easier than what I'm doing. Is Why don't you just do for the template you're going to make, mm -hmm. don't you also have to include or remove them in, let's say, an eighth of an inch for the guide with the thickness? No, what I have to do is, if this is the thickness of the walls, I have to actually cut off, I have to make these that much thinner. Uh, no, I'm, referring to, I'm referring to the one that you just put in, the, that you just drew. This one? Yes. If right. your template what that I'm, you make... Well, yeah, what I'm doing... Lines, Exactly. If I cut this template out, now this is the size of the bottom I'm going to put in here. Okay. So I do have to go back. And make it about an eighth of an inch larger. Yep, yeah, this is not exact. I'm just giving you an idea. <laughs> That's right. what I was getting at. The template I'm going to use, whether it's, whether it's uh, pieces of wood or a, a solid template like this, it has to be this distance on the outside all the way around. Because remember the the uh, thickness of the, guide. the thickness of the walls on the guide bushing is going to normally come to about right there. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. And the, you know, and the bit you know the bit we needs to come right to where I need to do. Is that clear to everybody? You under, everybody understand what he was saying? Alright, then I do have to uh, make whatever size walls I want, I have to make my template eighth of an inch thinner. Or inside, outside of that line, eighth of an inch. Right? Does it matter? You said that the, 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 uh, it rounds off the corners or the inside corners. Does that matter when you put the base on? No. Or only thing going? that happens, when I do a, a round the corner like this, it looks more impressive than if I squared each one of these up. But you can square it up. Just take a chisel and that's square true. it up. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you can, I've never done this before. So that's, well, that's, why, that's why I say you you got options to do it. I'm just showing you one way it happens. Okay. And I want to. I was just emphasizing to you, even though these these pieces come to a square point, when I route it, that bit is not going to square it up, and you have to square it up with your chisel. Okay. So if you wanted to square, you can do that. But sometimes uh, leaving something round is a little more impressive than making it square. 
It looked like you did more work when you really hadn't done it. Square lines don't occur naturally in nature. Yeah, everything, most woodworkers, everything you do is at a square point of square boxes, hexagon boxes, or whatever. When you start doing uh, shape boxes and you can route it, or you can, like I said, it, it could be, uh, that's why, you know, I want to do this class because at the woodworking show, I stand up three days talking to people, showing them how to make anything I make about boxes or whatever, what little knowledge I have. And if, if uh, you want to make a box, it look like that. You might be the only woodworker sitting there outside of somebody who's got a lot more experience and spent a lot more time making that, that box. But now, if it's out of a solid log or solid wood, you can take a log and shape it any way you want to shape it on the outside of it.